King John of England was forced to sign the Magna Carta, stating that the king was not above the law of the land and protecting the rights of the people. Today, the Magna Carta is considered one of the most important documents in the history of democracy. John became king in 1199 when his brother, Richard the Lionheart, died without any children. John had a bad temper and could be very cruel. He was not liked by the English nobles. John also had to deal with a lot of issues while he was king. He was constantly at war with France. To fight this war, he placed heavy taxes on the nobles of England. He also angered the Pope and was excommunicated from the church. By 1215, the nobles of northern England had had enough of John's high taxes. They decided to rebel. Led by Baron Robert Fitzwalter, they marched on London, calling themselves the Army of God. After taking London, John agreed to negotiate with them. King John met the nobles on June 15th in the year of 1215 at Runnymede, a neutral site just west of London. Here the nobles demanded that King John sign a document called the Magna Carta, guaranteeing them certain rights. By signing the document, King John agreed to do his duty as King of England, upholding a law and running a fair government. In return, the nobles agreed to stand down and surrender London. It turns out that neither side had any intention of following the agreement. Not long after signing, King John attempted to nullify the agreement. He even had the Pope declare the document illegal and unjust. At the same time, the nobles didn't surrender London. Soon the country of England was facing civil war. The nobles, led by Robert Fitzwalter, were supported by French troops. For a year, the nobles fought King John in what is called the First Nobles' War. However, King John died in 1216, putting a quick end to the war. The Magna Carta was not a short document. There were actually 63 causes in the document outlining various laws that the nobles wanted the king to enforce. Some of the rights that these clauses promised included protection of church rights. This clause was specifically included to stop the king from interfering in what the church did and gave the church the right to elect its own leaders rather than have them chosen by the king. Another clause was access to swift justice. This clause established the idea that people could only be judged according to the law and that even the king himself had to follow the law. It stipulates that a person should be judged by a group of their equals, not by the king or his men. The jury system that still exists in Britain today is a continuation of the idea put forward in this clause. A third clause was that no new taxes would be levied without the nobles' agreement. This clause meant that the king could not demand new taxes without first obtaining the approval of the key people in his government. It led to the idea of parliament. A council of 25 barons who would ensure that the king follow the laws was established as well. This clause gave the barons the right to form a committee of 25 who would monitor the king and take action against him if he failed to honor his agreement to them and to the free men of his country. The king hated this clause most of all. Although John did not follow the agreement, the ideas put forth in the Magna Carta became lasting principles of liberty to the English. Three of the clauses are still in force as English law, including the freedom of the English church, the ancient liberties of the city of London, and the right to due process. The ideas of the Magna Carta also influenced the constitutions and development of other countries. The American colonists used the rights guaranteed in the document as a reason to rebel and form their own country. Many of these rights are written into the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Thanks for watching this video on the Magna Carta. Go to my webpage, Classical World Blueprint, for more information on world history from classical times to the Renaissance.